Hey, what's going on, folks? It's Mike here, and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, I'm going to bring you a question that I got during a C++ interview for a position a few years back that I worked for uh, a little bit. And what I want to go ahead and do is just go ahead and show you the question and give you a little bit of time to think about it. And it's with a topic that we've been studying recently on casting. So here's the question. And the question goes as follows. Which C++ feature would you use to cast a pointer to class A into a derived class B? Now, why is the interviewer asking me this question? Well, usually this is part of your first round where you're screening and just kind of testing your C++ knowledge. And they're saying, hey, does Mike know some C++ and can they answer something uh, reasonably well here? So this is part of a rapid fire list of about 20 or so C++ questions before you get into something uh, more algorithmic. So with that said, how to approach this question? Well, one, I think what someone's looking for is just, do you know more modern C++. Do you know at least modern C++ 11, which again, if you're subscribed to this series, you do and you will continue to learn more. So basically what they want to see is, um, you know, if you're trying to uh, cast a pointer, so let's go ahead and just kind of set this up here. Let's say that we have uh, our class A here, and I'll actually give these better names here. So let me just transform the problem a little bit. Uh, derive class D and a pointer class, uh, let's call it B here. And let's just go ahead and say, hey, we have our base B here and derived uh, D here. And these are uh, pointers here as well. So there's a little bit of a hint here. Okay, so we've kind of seen some of this setup in previous videos, but again, this is just so you understand what's going on in the question uh, and what the folks are trying to ask here. And if they're saying, okay, I want this class B here, I want it to be treated like this type of object that we would create. So again, let's try to be complete. We could use like new base or something like this, new derived. And again, depending on where you are in the series, you might also think about things like uh, making this shared pointer or unique pointer or whatever when you just create these pointers. But again, let's just keep things simple and assume you have uh, pointers here. And they want to know, can I just say, hey, this is a uh, drive pointer for uh, B now, and then you know do something uh, interesting with it. You know, have some do function here. So if you've been following along in this series, well, you know, you could answer this and say, well, I'm going to do a C style cast here. But we really do want to sort of move away from these C style casts. And the reason is because, well, we've learned about things like static cast, dynamic cast, and we're going to learn about some other types of casts coming up later in this series. So again, make sure you're subscribed for those. But this idea is, well, eventually, if these are truly in the same hierarchy, and that's sort of implied because this is a drive type here, you know, could we do something better between static or dynamic? So how are you going to answer this? And I'll give you a few moments to pause the video here if you'd like, and then we can go ahead and pick up from there. So hopefully you pause the video, thought about this for just a moment here so you could formulate your own answer. And the answer that I'd like you to come up with is, well, you need a little bit more information. So <laughs> let's go ahead and um, you know, try to concoct uh, an answer to this. Uh, again, this is going to work here, but, you know, let's go ahead and take a look here. Now, if the interviewer just gives you some code like this, we can actually try this out for ourselves. Uh, and actually, uh, well, the answer is if we want to try dynamic cast here, and uh, we want to convert into the drive class D here for B, well, let's actually try this out here and see what we remember here. Um, and let's go ahead and print this uh, works here. OK, something like this here. And actually, what I'll do here is um, put this into a uh, God bolt so we can go ahead and see. OK, so here's our original question. Here's compiler explorer on godbolt.org. And I had something set up like this. And again, let me just fix up the typed here. And, you know, before I uncomment this and uh, make the change here to see if this actually works, um, again, let's let's try to think about what we have here. I've got some base class, the drive class. Again, so this is the setup here. So again, just from this question, um, you know, we probably still want a little bit more information here. And I think this is what somebody maybe is poking at uh, for you to set up the example here uh, and how I've set it up here. So let's go ahead and just try this out uh, and see your answer, um, at least from this setup. So you can go ahead and pause if you want, and then I'll uncomment this in a moment, and then we'll see if some text prints out, then this is 
valid here and we can just use a dynamic cast. That would be sort of our answer. Uh, so let's go ahead and see. And well, this doesn't work here. Okay, so what's going on? Well, we'll revisit that in a moment here. And let's go ahead and just try, you know, what were our other options? Well, static cast is what we learned before. So uh, this uh, actually works here. Okay, so this is kind of interesting. But let's actually see what happens. I, I don't think we have an answer uh, quite yet. So let's go ahead and uh, from our uh, base here, let's go ahead and um, let, let's just do something with this uh, base class here. And again, you're not going to have time in an interview to sort of do uh, what I'm doing here. Uh, so I'm just going to call base, you know, some function. Uh, but I'm just trying to make the point of how can we sort of uh, play around with this. And then, of course, uh, in our base class here, I'll leave in uh, this member variable here just so it's sort of uh, different. Let's go ahead and um, implement this function here. Uh, so I'm going to override it. And this is from our derived. And let's go ahead and um, on this actual uh, object here. So let's see if we can do the uh, static uh, cast here. And then we'll actually uh, call uh, some function here. And let's see what uh, happens here. And oops, looks like I have one uh, little mistake here. Let me keep this virtual here uh, and put in the uh, the notes here, the uh, quotations, or excuse me, the uh, parentheses, and let's see what we've got here. Okay, oh, it's uh, private too. Let's go ahead and make this uh, all public here. Okay, so let's see what happens. Okay, so this works base uh, some function here. So this can uh, work up and down uh, the hierarchy here. So this actually works here. And again, let's go ahead and do the uh, dynamic cast here, dynamic cast. And again, well, this isn't working here. Now, why isn't this working here to take this uh, drive class here? And again, this is where we have to be sort of very careful uh, with the setup of this problem here. And maybe again, I'm just trying to give you the things that you could sort of poke around with on an interview question. So it says, which C++ feature would you use to cast a pointer to class B into a class uh, D here? Uh, and I think, you know, it depends what this type is here. Do we have a complete type here? So what if I make this derived here for our base class here? Now this actually works here because again, I'm allocating the memory here for my pointer B here for the dynamic cast. Okay. Uh, so then that's allowed if this is sort of the setup of your problem here. And maybe I should just call this something else like object here. Uh, and let's go ahead and change this to object every time object, etc. So this allows me to do the runtime check of, you know, is there a complete type here? So let me go ahead and just type that out here. Uh, and I'll say, if uh, object is a complete type for derived, then we can cast uh, because well, we can see that we are allocating the memory for the drive type. So you know, even though it's part of this hierarchy here, uh, so this would be valid that we could sort of do the, the casting. We want to do this dynamic cast to see, hey, is this possible here? Now, it's kind of interesting that the static cast works here. OK, uh, I'm not actually sure uh, what this is returning. This is allowing us to do it here, right? This uh, works here. And let me go ahead and just make this uh, back to base here. Uh, but let's try to, uh, you know, add something else here. Um, I don't know, some other virtual void uh, do action. OK, and let's go ahead and print something out here. Uh, this is from the derived do action. Uh, OK, let's just give it a moment to catch up here. OK, so this is working and we're sort of happy that we've done this uh, thing here. But let's again keep working with our static uh, cast here to the derived uh, for our object. And I'm going to put in uh, do action here. Uh, let's go ahead and see uh, if this works. Uh, well, let's see. It's printing out this works here. Uh, and what else here? <laughs> because this is kind of interesting here um, that now we're not getting anything to, to print out here. In fact, let me try to comment this out. Let me see if I get something uh, back here. OK, so now it's it's sort of working, but it's not really working. And let me get all this on the, the code here. Um, just bear with me for one moment here. Let me put it uh, over here just so we can see. 
Um, do folks see what the problem is with this one? And this is where, you know, we're finally getting to an answer here. Um, you know, if I have this base class here and the derive type here has other stuff, you know, we're sort of able to get away with this uh, cast here. But as soon as I put in, uh, you know, hey, change this type here, you know, our program's returning some sort of crash here. So it's not actually printing out anything here. Um, so this isn't allowed, right? Because derived isn't implementing all the things from, uh, or rather, sorry, the way to state this is our base here that we've instantiated doesn't have all these types here. Now let's go ahead and try to change it to derived. So do we have a complete type here? Yes, this kind of works here. Uh, okay. Um, in this instance where we're able to do the static cast, um, okay, so let's go ahead and I'm going to just keep rewinding back and forth here. Let's change this to dynamic cast. Okay, so this should still work. Okay, because we've got a complete type here for our base that we're creating. Uh, and let's go ahead. That looks like it uh, updated. Let me just put two exclamations just to uh, make sure that it ran. Yep. This runs here. And then again, let's try to say, okay, now our object here is not a complete uh, derived class. So as we're sort of um, uh, performing this, now this will fail, right? Because we've got other things that we're trying to do with this uh, particular uh, object when we're trying to cast it. Okay, so let's go ahead and just bring up the question one more time. So which C++ feature would you use to cast a pointer uh, to class B into a derive class D here. Uh, and let me go ahead and just make this a little bit cleaner here. My format to get a little bit messed up. There we are. Uh, so again, can I take this object, our base here, and cast it into some other derive class D? So the answer here really is what you would want to do. This is how I would answer something like this. I'd say you'd want to use dynamic cast because you do a runtime check to ensure that you have a complete type here. So are all of the member functions available that you want to use uh, for this particular type? If they're not, then don't do, you know, the actual action here. If they are, right, and again, uh, if I change this to derived here, this says, yeah, this is a complete type here. So now I can do this, but if I've just instantiated as a pointer, then again, I can't do this. So again, that's the sort of answer that you want to talk about. Now, don't forget the other things that we've learned about that you pay a cost to do this runtime check here, right? This costs me something every time I'm running the program. And depending on your compiler, you might need runtime type information as well to be able to do these dynamic casts. I think that might vary on some compilers, depending on what uh, industry or uh, or again, what compiler you're actually using here. So do keep that uh, in mind. Now you might be able to, you know, once you know that this is actually uh, safe to do, you know, you could actually do the, uh, you know, static cast here or something. Um, and I think I showed an example of that. So let's go ahead and make this uh, derived here. Um, static cast again is probably something safe to do on things like your primitive types, you know, floats to ins to doubles, these types of things. So, you know, you wouldn't have to uh, pay any types of costs for those. So again, these are the types of things that you want to kind of talk about in an interview to show your depth of the language or just the sort of decisions that you're making. You know, again, we would want to get uh, away from just doing a, um, you know, regular uh, C style cast here, uh, right? If I tried derived and said, Hey, uh, for my, uh, object here, uh, let me go ahead and, uh, just type in object, you know, treat it as this derived thing. And then, you know, maybe I happen to get lucky and just call some, uh, function here, you know, something, uh, like this here, uh, for our object. You know, again, this happens to, uh, work here, right? We're able to call uh, let's see, it's this first one that we're trying here. But again, if I'm trying to force it and say do uh, action, uh, let's see what it does. Does so it? Uh, it does. Okay, uh, I still have it as derived here. Let me make it the base here. You know, let's see. Then we do actually get a crash here, and we don't know why. Okay, so we want to do dynamic cast here. As we're gonna learn in this series again, the C style cast is gonna try out static cast, dynamic cast. Uh, const cast, actually const cast higher in that hierarchy 
And then all the way down to reinterpret cast is just like, hey, let's just try. And if it works, it works. Um, so we do want to avoid this. So uh, this is the worst answer you can probably give to show off your modern C++, uh, unless you're going to say, hey, it's actually using many of the you know four given uh, modern C++ 11 type casts. Uh, and then maybe you could even talk about things like bit cast and so on. So anyways, I think this video has gone on long enough. I hope it was useful. I hope I showed some examples or again, just how to think about it or maybe reinforce some of the things we didn't get to talk about in the other lessons where we're thinking about, you know, do I have a complete type here? You know, when I'm saying, hey, treat this object here as, you know, this pointer here, but how am I instantiating or allocating the memory? And again, if this is changing, right, how we're allocating here, new base uh, or new derived here, then again, that's just another stronger case for dynamic cast. Okay, so if you're passing in base, say into a function, and you have some separate function here, my function that's taking in base B uh, of some class here and give these better names, but then that's where you're going to say, hey, you know, do my dynamic cast um, to whatever type you want here on B and C is this, you know, valid here. <laughs> okay, if you're passing this around in a function here. Again, let's just go ahead and uh, make Godbolt happy here. I'll fix the compiler uh, mistakes here. Uh, but again, that this is a more realistic scenario of where you're going to, you know, need to be doing or thinking about dynamic cast versus static cast. Okay, so these are cool things that we have in modern C++ that we could do. Use them to your advantage now that you know them. And now, again, that you know the differences can practice them, you'll be able to ace the interview. All right, folks, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. If you enjoyed these types of interview style videos on questions I've had, I can sprinkle them into this series. Just let me know in the comments below. And with that said, we'll see you next time.